Hello everyone! Today we're going to answer one of mankind's greatest questions. Mushrooms? Or bats? But before we get into today's hot topic, a lot of people have been asking me after my last video why I didn't use the quarry to do my coffee farm with all the kegs. I placed all the kegs in the forest to the south. Was it really a very open and nice area? Well, let me show you why. That's because on this file, my main file, the quarry is generally full due to my little experiment so I pretty much forget it exists at all and I never use it for anything else. This little project has been going on for almost 100 years now. All I'm trying to do is turn the quarry into gems and valuable ore. But if I wasn't doing this, then yes, the quarry is absolutely the place to do crystallariums, kegs, whatever you want. Anything outside your farm, this is a great area for it. Because not only is it normally really open, but you can take the minecarts to get here, and your tractor can even come for the ride for some reason. Anyways, back to the topic at hand, whether or not the fruit bats are better than the mushrooms in your caves. Now, the time when you'll be presented with his choice is after you make 25,000 gold. Upon leaving your house, Demetrius is there. He's the one who's going to offer you this tough choice. So if you have some great idea of what to do with one of these two choices, make 25,000 gold as fast as possible, it's really not that hard to do. And then you have to choose mushrooms or bats, and hopefully this video is going to shed some light on which one is actually better, and hopefully there's a definitive winner, but I'm not so sure there will be. Originally, I would always pick mushrooms because they're more reliable, they grow every two days, I believe, they always give you the same thing, six mushrooms of varying quality, whereas the fruit bats, they're a little bit unreliable. I'm not sure they show up in any reliable numbers, it seems random, it's random what they give you, they're not worth as much, I think, but those are some of the things we're going to explore today. I think the best way to do this is to start two new files, make 25,000 gold on the first day on both, and then play the rest of the month, check in the cave every single day to see what they give you, and then explore the greater options for what those items can do for you. Can you give them as gifts? Can you use them as recipes? Are they good for the community center? What is their monetary value? Things like that. So the first thing we're going to do, two new files, one option for each, and then play through the first month and see how much we're left with at the end of that month. So file number one, simply called the mushroom farm. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll just cheat to make 25,000 gold right away. See, everyone's doing it wrong. They plant crops, work really hard for the money. All you've got to do is hit this button. It's that easy. 100,000 gold, just going to go to sleep. Actually, I'm going to see if Demetrius will show up right now. He probably won't. It triggers overnight. So we're going to sleep for the night, pick mushrooms, and go see what happens. Yep, work pretty hard for my money. And he's not here. Not entirely sure what happened here. Maybe you actually have to physically sell something worth 25000 That might be more so the trigger. So I might have to start this one more time. Maybe the rain summons Demetrius? Nope, he's not here. Okay, so I'm presuming you actually have to sell something in the bin worth 25000 or greater. That's not going to be too hard to do. All I've got to do is just spawn some items into existence and sell those. So we'll start over one more time. Well, there we go. Day one of a brand new file. So what we're going to do is bring some items into existence that are worth more than 25,000 gold. And I'm thinking maybe Prismatic Shards should do the trick. 999 of them, probably worth over 25,000 gold by my guesstimate. You can see the value there. Anyways, hopefully this works and Demetrius shows up. I don't know why he has to come after 25,000 gold. I mean, I know it's just a trigger in the game, but it'd be cool if there was an event behind it. Yeah, that'll about do it. 2 million gold. Might have overshot my estimate a little bit. All right, Demetrius, hopefully you're here. Yes, there he is. So this file is named the Mushroom Farm. Can you guess what we're going to pick? I'll save you embarrassing yourself. It's mushrooms. All right, so Demetrius should have set up his stuff already in the cave. I'm going to have to clear a little bit of a path for both of these because I don't want to have to dodge all this crap every time I play. Anyways, we'll go take a look. I don't think anything is ready yet. I believe tomorrow is the first day it will be ready. Obviously, it can give you a maximum of six mushrooms. There is also something of a rumor that you can harvest mushrooms twice a day if you pick them first thing in the morning and then wait again till night. So we're maybe going to try that right away. We're going to sleep on it tonight and then hopefully they're ready to go tomorrow. Interestingly enough, it's raining again today. It was raining on the last file when I tried this, and I've heard a rumor before that it always rains on the third day, so there might actually be some truth to that. Anyways, uh, nothing's happening here. We're just waiting for 40 hours apparently. Thanks to my UI Info Suite mod, you can actually see how long these are going to be. I didn't know that. Well, now I'm pretty curious. I want to sleep on it to see if it knocks that number down. It should be at about 38 hours by the time I'm in bed, so by the time I wake up tomorrow it should be closer unless you actually have to play through time during the day, which is also quite possible. Here we go again. It is the fourth day. I need to kind of keep track of this because when I do the fruit bats, I need to hold a similar pattern to make sure it's a pretty fair comparison. 
Okay, these are all ready to go today. Apparently we passed 38 hours and about 24. So maybe the UI info suite is just a little bit wrong. Anyways, I need to make a note of what I found here on the fourth. All right, so we've got four of these mushrooms, which are common mushrooms, and two of the red mushrooms, which are a little bit more valuable. We're going to pick these right away. And the UI info suite does not tell us anything further. So maybe it's just initially when they first show up, it gives you a countdown to when they're ready and doesn't really do a good job of that either. So one thing I am going to do is sit here absolutely all day and see if they spawn again. I'm going to sit outside though where it's nicer to look at. 1am right there as displayed by my little thing above my head and nothing's shown up again. So we'll sleep on it, see if anything pops up in the morning. Like I said, I think it's every two days for these regardless of how much time you spend in a day. On the way, might as well clear a little path. I do need to check the mushroom cave every day to try and determine the pattern. I don't think there's going to be anything there today and there's not. 7 hours and 40 minutes though so we'll actually be ready today. So by 2 o'clock this afternoon it should be ready so I'm going to sit here and wait. I'm not sure the UI info suite is reliable on this one so we're just manually going to check. So right as 2pm rolls around more mushrooms again which is curious. So if I pick these again I don't know if they'll start their countdown again until tomorrow at least. But we're now up to 8 of the common mushrooms and four of the red mushrooms so those are pretty consistent so far. I know they are going to vary over time. It would be nice if I could see the timer starting now of how long these are going to take. According to my timing so far they can't be done twice in a day but they can be done every two days. So let's skip ahead to tomorrow and see what the result is. We'll check those in the morning and hopefully it gives me a countdown at the very least so I'll know what I'm working with. Checking in this morning, 6.10 a.m. and we've got 25 hours and 40 minutes so they're not going to be ready until tomorrow apparently which is normally the rate I would pick them at every two days is when I check them generally. And I can't help but notice that timer seems to start at the beginning of the second day after I harvest them. So I'm not sure if it just resets once you go to sleep and starts the countdown again. That appears to be what it's doing, at least according to my timer. So let's come back again tomorrow and see what we got then. Now, according to yesterday's timer, these things should be pretty well ready to go within an hour or two and they're already up. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and say every two days these are ready to go. Today we've got five of the common mushrooms and then one of the morels, however you pronounce it. These are actually pretty valuable and their energy and health, not too bad, but their value, 150, not too bad at all. Now let's pretend for a sec that we're an average player picking mushrooms like this in our mushroom cave. We're not going to sit there and wait for the timer to count down. That's not very likely to do. We're just going to check it probably every few days like I'm doing. So that's the way we're going to play this one. So we picked today on the 7th, we'll come back on the 9th. This is what we get on the 9th. I'm not sure if foraging still has anything to do with what you find. I don't believe it does. So at this point, I'm just going to check this every few days. I'll show you guys again at the end of the month what we have at that point. Let me just stop and show you the first purple mushroom I found so far. The 21st. That's how long it took. These are generally the ones you want to find. They are the most valuable. They also give you huge energy and health. Whereas some of the other mushrooms, not so much. So the more of those you find, the better off you're going to be. Well, here we are. The first day is summer. So this is a result of one month. We'll take a quick look before changing it over to the fruit bats. So we got 49 common mushrooms, 14 red ones, 7 of these, 5 yellowish ones, and 3 purple mushrooms. And that is a total of 78 mushrooms for spring. Now obviously you could harvest these every day and get about twice as many as I determined early on in spring. But like I said, most people aren't going to do that. I'm certainly not. So we're going to see the results as is. Now we'll try the fruit bats. I'm curious to see if you get as many items through spring. So let's do that. Also, I would like to note right now that picking these did not give you any foraging experience. My skill did level up from cutting the trees down to make a path. But picking these gives you no experience. Well, here we go. Another farm. This one called the Bat Cave Farm. It's already winning just because it's called the Bat Cave Farm. And because consistency is the spice of life, 999 prismatic shards sold. So Demetrius will come around tomorrow because he wants in on all this money I'm making and offer me the choice again. At which point we will of course pick bats. I couldn't help but notice in his dialogue there he says he has to go and set it up now. I don't know what he's setting up for the bats. I'm pretty sure there's nothing actually in there. Anyways, I won't show you my clearing technique. We'll just go ahead and see if there's actually anything there yet. And I don't think there will be until tomorrow, but this is what Demetrius was busy setting up. Typical scientist. Now, because I am unsure how often the bats are going to show up, I'm going to go ahead and check that cave every single day to see if any fruit shows up. The third of spring, nothing yet. I didn't get mushrooms until the fourth though, so let's hope there's some fruit there tomorrow. Like I said originally, 
I think the mushrooms are going to be more consistent being they give you six mushrooms every two days whereas the fruit seems to be sporadic. Maybe one or two every few days, maybe even longer. I've never really paid attention. Well, today was the day that the mushrooms produced and the bets are letting me down already. So far, nothing. Like I said, I'll check it every single day till the end of the month and I'm not really confident I'm going to find very much fruit from these idiots. Hey, look at that, our first treasure. The 8th of spring, it took all the way to the 8th to find one single thing, and it's a salmon berry, which grow in abundance in a week from now. Hey, look at that. The 14th of spring, almost one week later, we got two salmon berries, which again, grow in abundance tomorrow. Finally, something that might be worth our time. The 15th, we have five things pop up in a single day. Didn't even know that was possible. So here we have a blackberry that comes from fall, so that's way ahead of the schedule. More salmon berries, a cherry which I believe is summer, and a spice berry which is a summer forageable item. So that's actually not bad considering. Things seem to be a little bit more consistent now. The 16th we have another item so maybe as you get further into spring they get more consistent or that might just be pure luck. I have been keeping an eye on my luck every day and it doesn't seem to have any effect on what shows up when. Here we are again, the first of summer, that means our fruit collecting is done, and the results are pretty cut and dry for this one. There is only 12 items here, 12 different fruits, as opposed to 78 we got from the mushroom cave, and that could have potentially been more. I guess this could have been two depending on what they dropped every day. One day they dropped me five things, but most days they dropped me nothing. Some of these items are pretty handy to have in spring, being that you cannot get them until summer or even fall, which is a nice jump ahead, but doesn't really make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. Nothing here is particularly valuable, and they're certainly not as valuable as the mushrooms. Now, while the results may vary of what you get, these items are only worth 335 gold for all of spring. Now, compared to the mushrooms, which are worth 5,610 gold. So that is a difference of over 5,000 gold. The fruit is basically worthless and these are actually not bad money. That is 5,600 gold just from collecting mushrooms off my farm every two days. So right away, if you're going for monetary value, mushrooms are absolutely the way to go. They are much more valuable. Even if the fruit bats did produce a lot more than they do, they wouldn't really compare to the mushrooms because none of that fruit was really super valuable. Most of them were salmon berries or the forageable berries, which are good for energy, but not as good as money. And speaking of energy, these will all give you pretty good energy. The purple mushrooms especially will give you lots of energy and health. With the exception of the red mushroom, which is the second most common, everything here will give you decent health and energy. So if you're going for money, mushrooms is probably the way to go. They will physically make you the most money and they will give you lots of energy for going down into the mines where you tend to be working to make more money in the future as well. The fruit will give you decent energy. Again, not as good as the mushrooms and you get so many less that it's hard to justify. 25 energy is great, but if you only get one for all of spring, that's only 25 energy for all of spring. Not worth it. One place the fruit may actually hold an advantage over the mushrooms is what it can be made into. Because basically any of this can be made into its wine or jelly form, which makes it several times more valuable. Takes a little bit more effort, but really all you gotta do is throw it into its appropriate device and it will spit you out more valuable stuff. Now what most people have told me historically is that you want to do the fruit cave because it's really helpful for the community center. Because most of the things you get out of the cave can be used for the community center. Well, that's true. If they ever spawn, just about everything can be used, but at the same time about three quarters of the mushrooms can also be used for the community center. Albeit the mushrooms are a little bit easier to find, depending on what farm map you have, how much time you spend in the mines, you can definitely find lots of mushrooms down there. So I would say the fruit has the advantage there, they are better for the community center, but not by the huge margin that everyone seems to think. But one place where the fruit should have a definite advantage is gift giving. Any of the fruit that grows from trees, such as oranges, should be liked by pretty much anyone at any time, like Shane here, here you go. See. He likes it, and that's an orange, and that's Shane, he hates everything. And I'll wager that Willie likes cherries. Here you go, Willie breakfast. This looks great, thank you. See? Everyone likes the fruit that grows from trees. Now unfortunately, the fruit bat cave will give you not much that grows from trees. I got 12 items, 10 of which were not from trees. These are just forageable items. And apparently Alex has already received a gift from me today, so he doesn't get one. Now let's see what people think of the mushrooms. Now obviously they're probably going to have a negative reaction to the poisonous mushroom because, well, it's poisonous. Here you go Marnie, and I've already given Marnie a gift today. So the game's a little bit bugged, that doesn't seem very helpful to me. Maybe someone in here wants a poisonous mushroom, I bet Gus does. Marnie get out of the way, Gus? 
poisonous mushroom? This is absolute junk. I'm offended. So far, the mushroom gift giving not as good, but the purple mushroom is the most valuable rare mushroom. Does Pierre like it? This isn't exactly my favorite. See, people don't like the mushrooms as much. So from a gift giving friendship perspective, mushrooms are not the way to go. So I can almost break the cave choices down into two different play styles. One is for the monetary value like I like to play. And the fruit bat cave is more for making friends at the community center. We'll call it the community play style. But even the fact that it's not nearly as productive is a huge deterrent for me. It's nice to be able to pick mushrooms every day, have some consistent income, energy, whatever you want. Whereas the fruit bat cave, it might only give you two useful items, two truly useful items every single month. It has potential to give you more, but I've never seen it be a big producer in any of my files. So my grand conclusion to fruit bats versus mushrooms, go with the mushrooms. The only way I would ever consider going with the fruit bats ever again is if I was doing a community center challenge where you got to finish a community center in year one. That's really the only place you're going to get a benefit from it and even then, not really guaranteed. Whereas the mushrooms are just really reliable, really consistent, they give you a lot more money, so I would just make the money and buy the things that would get you what the fruit cave would otherwise provide you. Just use the money to buy the fruit trees from the fruit cave, then you get both anyway. You get mushrooms, you get fruit, whatever you want. So there it is, the winner, mushrooms all the way. That about concludes this one, hope you liked it, thanks for watching.